Hi, everyone, and welcome to another week of AP Physics. We are going to look at two-dimensional motion this week. So we're going to go ahead and get started by reviewing what vector and scalar are. Vector is going to be a measurement with both magnitude, which is a size and direction. So it's either going left, right, up, down. So you're going to end up having a vector is going to be something like this. A vector is going to be something like this, where you basically have an arrow, okay? And then you have the tail of the arrow is going to be down here, and then the head of the arrow is going to be up here. Now, scalar is going to be measurement that only has magnitude, so we're not really concerned about the direction of that value, that size, okay? So an example of our vector is going to be a man walking 10 meters in the positive direction. He then walks another four meters. What is his total displacement if the four meters is in the same direction? So he walks 10 meters, okay? And then he is right here and he walks another four meters. So what you do is you're going to go ahead and add those together. So when you're adding vectors, you're going to go from the tail of the first one to the head of the final one. And so your total is going to be 14 meters in the same direction. In this case, I've drawn it to the right. In our next example, a man walks 20 meters in the positive direction. So 20 meters in the positive direction. <clears throat> and then it looks like he turns around, changes directions, turns around and walks back 15 meters. So then what is his resultant going to be? So you're going to go from the tail of the first one to the head of your last one. And the difference there is going to be 20 minus 15, which is going to give you a total of five meters. So our guidelines for vector addition, the first thing that you wanna do is you always wanna do tip to tail. <clears throat> so for example, if I'm going to add two vectors, I'm going to add those two vectors like this. And then my resultant is going to go from here to here. That's where my resultant is going to be. Okay. Um, so you do not want to go tail to tail. So for example, I would not go this way. That is not correct. Okay. You're going to go from tip to tail. Vectors can be added in any order. So you can start with vector A, B, C, or D, just as long as they are adding in the correct direction. The answer to the vector is called the resultant. So that's why I wrote R here, my resultant or my resulting vector. The resultant begins at the tail of the first vector and ends at the tip of the second vector. So to subtract a vector, add its opposite. Okay, so you're just gonna flip the sign. And if you multiply a vector by a scalar, you just get a vector with a multiplied length. So let's try another question and or, or another problem. A man walks three kilometers east, then four kilometers north, then another five kilometers east. What is his resultant vector? Okay, so he is going to walk three kilometers east, four kilometers north, and then another five kilometers east, okay? What is his resultant? So sometimes I think that it's easier to go ahead and do something like change our ink color for um, maybe our resultant or changing our ink color for our X and our Y direction. So I'm going to go from the tail of my first one to the head of my last one, okay? And in order to figure that out, I'm going to have to figure out, okay, what is that that length, that resultant length, length. Well, if you think about it, if I look at this as if it's a triangle, a right triangle, okay, I have my sides, my side here is going to be 
eight kilometers and my side and my y is going to be four kilometers. So you guys know a squared plus b squared equals c squared. And our c squared is our resultant or our hypotenuse in this case. So we're going to end up figuring out c, c or our resultant is equal to the square root of eight squared plus four squared. Okay, that's going to end up giving me 8.9 kilometers. And then the next part of this is going to be to tell me what the uh, direction is. So the direction, we're going to figure that out by figuring out what our angle is here. Okay, well, we know opposite. Okay, so our opposite over adjacent is going to be tangent. So tan theta is equal to four divided by eight, which is the same as one half. So we end up getting that our theta, okay, is equal to 26.6 degrees. And we get that by theta equals inverse tan one half. And that's what I end up getting. I end up getting 26.6 degrees. Okay. So let's move on to our next question. Um, but first, before we actually move on to our next question, we're going to look at our vector components. So it's really important to be able to split up our vector into our X components and our Y components or our horizontal components and our vertical components. So when I'm looking at my vector, I end up having my right triangle in this case, okay, in this top diagram. And so it's very important for you to see that my opposite side, my opposite side is my A, Y, okay? If my opposite side is my A, Y, I know sine theta equals opposite. So it's going to be A, Y divided by a. So how do I get a y by itself? I end up getting a y equals a or our resultant sine, our angle. Okay. And then we're going to do the same thing with our x. Our x is going to be, so we have cosine of our angle is equal to adjacent, which is a x divided by a. So those of you guys who are not 100% sure on that or aren't familiar with um, our trigonometry, this is why I gave you guys the review um, before this class, but we have SOHCAHTOA sine is equal to our opposite over our hypotenuse, okay? Cosine is equal to our adjacent over our hypotenuse. That's so S O H K C A H TOA. Tan is equal to opposite over adjacent. Okay. Um, so then what are we going to do with that? Well, you're going to be using mostly velocity, especially in this unit. So we're going to be looking at velocity and you're going to be given a velocity value and you're going to have to find your horizontal components and your vertical components. So it's important for you to see here that your VY is equal to V sine your resultant, or your, I'm sorry, your angle, and Vx is V cosine, your angle, okay? So it's very important for you to see this. Now, one thing that you may have heard before is that the sine is always y. Please do not stick with that philosophy because you will see in our next unit on forces that that is not true. The sine is not always y. 
So moving on to our next question. Our next question says that a toy airplane moves forward for 20 meters at 14 degrees above the horizontal, then travels 15 meters at 10 degrees below the horizontal. What are the X and Y components of the very first displacement? So we have 20 meters, and that's at a 14 degree angle. And we're trying to find our X and our Y. So our X in our first direction is going to be, this is adjacent, so that's going to be our cosine. So 20 cosine 14. And our Y is 20 sine 14. Okay. So this ends up giving us, our cosine gives us 19.4 meters. And our sine or our y direction gives us 4.8 meters. Okay. So compared to its original position, how much higher or lower is the plane after completing the two displacements? So we're looking at higher or lower. So we're really only concerned about our y direction. So I'm going to figure out our y direction of this next vector. So we have a 10 degree angle. Here is my y2, okay? And it's 15 meter, a 15 meter vector. So my y2 is equal to 15 sine 10 degrees and it's going in the negative direction so I'm going to pay attention to that and see that it's 2.6 meters but it's going to be subtracting from my y that was going up so my y total is going to be 4.8 meters and that's in the positive direction because I'm going up and then minus because I'm going down 2.6 meters, which is going to give me a total of 2.2 meters higher. Okay, because it didn't go below the horizontal at that point. Okay, so now why does this matter? Why are we even looking at this? Well, we're going to start looking at projectile motion and projectile motion is when an object is falling. So here we have a falling object I notice the distance gets longer with each second of time, okay? So we have our falling object, free falling object, so acceleration due to gravity is working in the y direction, but it also has horizontal components. So it's also moving sideways. We have both horizontal and vertical components, but it's important for you to see that the, these two components are independent of each other horizontal and vertical, they're independent. The one thing that ties them together is the fact that they have the same time, okay? Because if I have an object that's launching off of, say, a table, okay? Well, my x direction is going to be the same time as my y direction. It takes as, just as long for it to go left to right as it does for it to go from top to bottom. But it's important for you to know that horizontally, there's no acceleration acting on it, okay? Unless it's otherwise stated. So in that case, we use this velocity equals distance divided by time or, 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 or displacement or position. And then we can also use position or displacement equals velocity times time. And acceleration equals zero unless otherwise stated. In our vertical motion, we have acceleration due to gravity working downward at 9.8 meters per second squared. Now here's the deal. If you want to set your downward as negative, set your downward as negative. Make sure you use negative 9.8 meters per second squared. So let's look at a sample problem. We have a ball is launched horizontally at 12 meters per second. Now when you see this term horizontally or launched horizontally, we know that V initial in the Y direction equals zero, okay? Because there's no angle. So there's no velocity in the Y direction because it's perfectly horizontal. So the velocity in the X direction is equal to, oh, 
velocity initial in the x direction is equal to 12 meters per second from the top of a building and the ball moves for 2.3 seconds before striking the ground. Determine the overall distance between the ball's launch position and its landing position. Okay, so if we look at that, okay, we're going to figure out we have our X components and we have our Y components. Okay, so if I were to draw this, I have a cliff or whatever, a top of a building, sorry, and I'm launching at 12 meters per second. And the ball is going to drop, and I know that my time equals 2.3 seconds, okay? So if I look at my x direction and I look at my y direction, what do I know? Well, I know vx is equal to x divided by time, okay? I know acceleration equals zero, and I know that my total displacement is vx times t. My vx final is equal to my vx initial, so I can just take my position is equal to 12 meters per second times 2.3 seconds. Seconds cancel, and I get that my horizontal position is 27.6 meters. So I now know that this distance right here is 27.6 meters, but I do not know what my vertical distance is. So what do I know? I know that my gravity is 9.8 meters per second squared, and I'm going to set my down as my positive. This is my positive y, that's my negative y. The reason I'm going to do that is because I know v initial y equals zero, okay? And I, I want to know what my displacement is from that position, but I don't, I don't wanna move into negative numbers. So I'm looking for my change in y. Well, I know that my change in y is equal to v initial y t plus one half g t squared. And the reason that I know that I'm going to use that equation is because I know that my v initial y is zero, so that cancels. I know my gravity and I know my time. So my change in y is equal to 9.8 divided by two times 2.3 seconds squared and that's gonna end up giving me 25.9 meters down. So I have 27.6 meters right, and I have 25.9 meters down. And so I know I'm going to go 27.6 and 25.9. I need to figure out what my resultant is, okay? And I know that it's directed in my southeast position, okay? And I could figure out that angle by using my tan, but I'm going to figure out that value by using my a squared plus b squared equals c squared, and my resultant is equal to the square root of 25.9 squared, plus 27.6 squared, which ends up giving me a value of 37.8 meters southeast, okay? Now moving to our last question for the day, we have a stone kicked horizontally off a 75 meter tall cliff. So kicked horizontally, again, that tells me that my V initial Y equals zero. Super important for you to realize that. Off of a 75 meter tall cliff. So I know that that's my change in my Y position. At an initial speed of 18 meters per second, 18 meters per second is my V initial and my X direction. 
how far does the stone move? So I know that I have 75 meters to fall. And I know that I have a launch of 18 meters per second. So what do I need to know? Well, if I look in my x direction, I know v initial x equals v final x, which equals 18 meters per second. I know that position is equal to vx times time, but I do not have time. Well, how do I find time? I need to use my y because I know from my last equation that I just used, and this is the most important equation to use in the, these types of problems, change in y equals v initial yt plus one half gt squared. And remember, my v initial y is equal to zero. So this ends up giving me zero. So when I manipulate this equation, I get two times change in y equals gt squared. t is equal to two times change in y divided by g, and I have to take the square root of that because it was t squared. So when I figure that out, I do the square root of two times 75 meters divided by 9.8. Remember, I didn't use negative because I'm setting my downward as positive. Do you have to do that? No, okay? But I want to do that. And the reason I want to do that is because if my change in Y is downward and I set downward as negative, then I would have to have my change in Y as a negative value. So from that, I end up figuring out that my time is equal to 3.91 seconds. And from that, I end up getting that my position is equal to 18 meters per second times 3.91 seconds. Seconds is going to end up canceling, and I'm going to end up getting a total distance or displacement of 70.4, which using significant figures, I end up getting 70 meters. What could have been changed about this position to result in the stone moving farther from the horizontal? Well, there's only one thing. Well, I mean, you could have changed actually two things. You could have changed the launch speed or the launch velocity, okay? Because if you increase the launch velocity, it would have increased the distance, okay? But also, if you would have increased the launch height, that would have increased the time. And if that increases the time, then that ends up causing our horizontal position to increase. So those are your sample problems for our um, vectors as well as our horizontal projectiles. This week, we're really only going to have two days worth of lecture notes. So hopefully you look forward to that. And um, hopefully this was helpful. If you have any questions, please go ahead and reach out.